Welcome to the Statistic in ED YouTube channel. Today I want to compare an independent samples t-test to a Wilcoxon rank sum test for independent samples also known as the Mann-Whitney test or Mann-Whitney U test or Wilcoxon man whitney test. And we want to see how these two tests differ depending on the data. The research question I have is satisfaction with partnership and so we have two independent groups and both are asked the same question on a scale from 0 to 100 how satisfied are you with your relationship but the difference between the two groups is which question they were asked previously so we can call this framing we create a specific context by asking a question before we ask about the satisfaction with the relationship so group A is previously asked Think of the worst experience in your relationship. On a scale from 0 to 100, how much did it affect trust in your partner? And group B's previous question reads, think of the best moment in your relationship. On a scale from 0 to 100, how much did it strengthen your bond? So um, next to that research question, satisfaction with partnership, we can ask ourselves how much this framing um, influences results. And we assume that the two groups are random samples from the population, so there should be no other systematic difference between the groups um, next to the previous question that they were asked. So before we dive right into the data, a little bit of background about the two tests. So the independent samples t-test is a parametric test. That means it makes a couple of assumptions about the data. The t-test assumes that the data are on an interval scale. It assumes that the data are normally distributed and it assumes equal variances in the groups. Um, these assumptions are debatable. Um, studies have shown that the t-test can react quite in a robust way to violations of the assumptions. It depends on the group sizes. For example, if you have equal group sizes and larger samples, then violations of these assumptions are not so critical with smaller group sizes or, or huge differences between group sizes, um, the violations um, can be a bit more critical. The last assumption about the equal variances, um, if that is not met, there's a so-called Welch correction, so you can still deal with that situation. On the other hand, the Wilcoxon rank sum test or man whitney u test is a non-parametric test. That means it doesn't use the original data on an interval scale, but it works with ranks. So the data are just ranked or treated as ordinal data and therefore the test makes no assumption about the underlying distribution and it is recommended if the assumptions of the t-test are not met or if sample sizes are quite small. So let's compare these two tests on our data. This is the data we have. You see the R code for the plot on the right hand side. So the group that was made to think of the worst experience is displayed on the left and the group that was made to think of their best moment is displayed on the right and the visual impression shows that the best moment group is clearly more satisfied with their relationship than the worst experience group. Um, next to the box plot and the median that is displayed by this horizontal line are also display the mean value using this asterisk or star and we see the data are fairly normally distributed I simulated the data, you can find the code on my GitHub profile for this presentation and the data generating process is in there, so um, the data are taken from normal distributions and the means and the medians are almost identical in both groups. So let's see what the tests say about our group difference. We start with the independent samples t-test and um, I'm using the GT summary package here to display results in a publication-ready format. Um, the Welsh correction has been applied even though it may not have much of an influence here because the data are so well behaved, let's say, or normally distributed. Um, so the p-value is clearly significant, so we can conclude that the group that was made to think of the best moment is statistically more satisfied with their relationship than the group that was made to think of their worst experience. Note that they changed the default um, in the tibble summary function to display means and standard deviations, which um, 
are well in accordance with the t-test. So let's compare that to the Wilcoxon rank sum test. So here we display not means but medians and not standard deviations but the interquartile range. That is more in accordance with what the Wilcoxon rank sum test does. So it's not a mean comparison in the strict sense of the word, but we can say it compares central tendency. In the two groups, it doesn't work on the original scale, but it works on ranks. But we get to the same conclusion. The p-value is a little bit different than in the case of the t-test, but it's still clearly significant. So here we can also conclude that the group that was made to think of the best moment is significantly more satisfied with their relationship than the group that was made to think of their worst experience. Right, this is something we often find in practice when your data are not problematic in any sense, so fairly normally distributed, um, these tests very often come to the same conclusion. Let's see what happens when the data are not so well behaved anymore. I'm using exactly the same data as before, but I added one more data point that is easy to spot. For the worst experience group, I added one data point with a satisfaction value of 170. Now you can say, of course, this is a clear mistake. We asked for the values to be in a range between 0 and 100. Um, we could achieve the same effect using several, maybe a few, three or four values just inside the valid range, maybe at 95, 99 or so, and we would get a similar effect. But now for demonstration purposes, I want to use the single data point to show how it affects our two tests. Of course, we could say we have to do data cleaning here and remove this outlier. Um, but let's see for demonstration purposes how the tests react to this one outlier. What does it do to our group statistics? The medians and the appearance of the boxes um, are more or less the same, but there's a heavy influence on the mean value. The asterisk for the left group is now not inside the box anymore, not close to the median anymore, but well above the median and even on the upper limit of the box. So now the means are not as different as they were before anymore, but the visual impression looking at the boxes and the data points still suggests that the best moments group is generally more satisfied with their relationship than the worst experience group. But let's see what our statistical tests have to say about this. First we run the t-test again and we see that now the p-value is clearly not significant anymore. 0 0.6 is far above that usual threshold of 0 0.05. So here while the mean value for the best moments group is still slightly higher than for the worst experience group, we would conclude that Statistically speaking, according to the t-test, um, the best moments group is not statistically more satisfied with their relationship anymore than the worst experience group. So this one outlier had a strong influence and the test is not significant anymore. Let's compare this to the Wilcoxon rank sum test. And here we see the p-value has also changed. Um, it's a bit higher, but it's still well below the 0.05 threshold. So according to the Wilcoxon rank sum test, the group difference is still significant. Note that the median hasn't changed. It's still 63 as before for the worst experience group, whereas the mean is clearly higher than before. So the median is more robust towards this outlier than the mean, and the Wilcoxon rank sum test is more robust towards this outlier than the independent samples t-test. So what does it mean in practice? Um, often it's a good idea to run both tests if you have the time and the space to write about them. Maybe you just need a footnote to indicate that you did the second test as well. A lot of the times you will come to the same conclusion and then it's not problematic. And if you come to different conclusions, I hope these examples showed you how to interpret them and how to make sense of your data. So we can say there's a trade-off that we have to make. While the Wilcoxon rank sum test is more robust towards outliers or violations of assumptions, it uses less information in our data. So it disregards how far data points are apart from each other. So we lose some of the information in the data using the more robust test. Right, I hope you found that useful and you get a better feeling what these tests do and um, in which aspects they differ. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. 
Check out my other videos. All the best for your own data analysis. See you next time. Ciao.